A counter-insurgency publication, Zagazola Makama, focused on the Lake Chad region, reported over the weekend that members of a new terrorist group, Lakurama, are offering financial incentives to recruit young people in Sokoto State. According to the publication, the new group is offering as much as one million naira to young men in exchange for their allegiance. Finally, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Arrive News have taken the bold step to report about insecurity that is going on in this country. When I was telling us that this country, one day you will be in your house, a certain people will knock at your door, you will think it's just a random visitor. Behold, as you open the door, you will meet people with fully loaded ammunition and they will call, ask you questions under duress. Are you a Muslim or you are a Christian? Your answer that very moment will determine your fate. Either you remain alive or you be a dead man or a dead woman. Now, in this issue, there is this new terrorist group that they called Lakurama. And this new terrorist group, they are now offering one million naira each to every Nigerian citizen who agreed to embrace Sharia law. You see, when I was telling us that this country is going to be Islamized, many people thought I was wasting time, I was just vomiting, you know, a speech or whatever you may call it, I don't care. Now you have beginning, now you have begun to see the reality of everything that I have been saying. And in other words, I have been vindicated. Thank God for this particular report from Arise News in details. So ladies and gentlemen, let me allow you to listen to this report in details from Sahara reporters about new, this new terrorist group and uh, how Nigerian government are illegally, secretly trying a woman because she is fighting against insecurity in Sokoto states. That is just her crime. Anyway, let me leave you to watch this video and I shall be right back to discuss the remaining things with us after the video. Makama quoted sources saying that the financial initiatives are part of an aggressive recruitment campaign aimed at attracting followers to their cause. The group are reported to adhere to extremist ideologies similar to the beliefs of Boko Haram. Well, we know that over the weekend, uh, the group had killed about 15 people in Kebi State. Defense headquarters uh, recently declared nine suspected uh, members of the group wanted. I believe the spokesperson, Edward Buba, had said that, you know, the terrorists were from the Niger Republic and they, you know, they came from that time when there was that sort of uh, disruption between Nigeria and Niger work. Okay, so a couple of things. I'll, I'll merge two stories together. Mm -hmm. I mean, the great Ochaya. Uh, Okiwe was apt in his rebuttal then. And Okiwe is one of those rare men in Nigeria mm. that decided to say, power doesn't mean so much or the hand to me. If it does go in line with my convictions, I will leave. Mm. And he left being, you know, the number two man in this country, mm. the great Ochaya. Truth is, he must get to a time. And when we let's dial back as regards the OIC, it started because of the Alhasa fire that happened when Muslim in Jerusalem and the Muslim region said, the Muslim mm -hmm. country said, let's have a force, a speaking force. Yep. And they brought or they cobbled a couple of these nations together, Muslim majority nations. Mm -hmm. Some African countries also joined. But my big question is, why is Africa constantly always being the one to carry the begging bowl around to join almost everything? Nigeria is a circular nation. Let's never forget that. And that's my argument. Yes, they might do a lot in terms of collaboration, trade and partnership and all of that. But as the name implies, nations that have majority Muslims. And it looks as an optics that is not fair on the other people in Nigeria that are of other faiths. It's just like Nigeria joining the World Christian Association. That's an imbalance there. So please, let us also set that straight. And Africa should stop being a begging bowl. As regards President Tinubu and the vice, you know, uh, what's it called, governor of the Riyadh region, this was the same Nigeria that when our prime minister went visiting Tafawa Balewa in the 60s in America, it was the vice president of America that came to receive him in the airport. Mm -hmm. Compare and contrast those time and now. It shows that Nigeria is losing something on the international scene. As regards this terrorist group, Oji, for this terrorist group to even bring out, say they want to give people one million naira, then there are people funding them. 
What has the government done to at first block the financial muscle of this group? For every bullet shot, you know people are buying those bullets. So the government should be able to come in with intelligence, NFIU and the likes, to see who are those funding this group. Secondly, use intelligence and drones and everything to swoop in on them. Absolutely. Thirdly, the economic condition. After the Metisani riots, it was said that if we don't fix the economic condition of the north and some other areas, then we're going to have long-lasting problems. Those problems have come to roost now. Mm -hmm. Hernando de Soto famously wrote about the Ministry of Capital. He was, it's, it was Hernando de Soto's suggestion that helped end most of the war in his native Peru. He said, give property rights and give economic empowerment to the people of a certain area, and the role of insurgent group will stop. Mm -hmm. Because these people, too, we have foot soldiers in those communities because of the economic empowerment. Absolutely. So how can we turn that around? The last uh, tweet has talked about things like empowerment schemes in those areas. Yes. So let's work on this. But most importantly, let's find the money. When a revelation was made in Dubai, I regard people that were funding some terrorist group in Nigeria. Till today, those people have not been brought to book. So we must be able to stop the money trail so that groups like this do not become a problem because it's fast becoming a problem and this situation is muffing and muffing. I mean, for me, Vimba, is the brazen disregard for our security forces. These people are out there in broad daylight. I tried to send the video to our, you know, correspondent in the north and they said they were not speaking how they were speaking for full day. And, you know, it's quite rare to see people just out there. What is the location? Why is it possible for them to be able to do this? Before I stop, come to you in the meantime. The Sokoto State Police Command has confirmed the arrest and jailing of a woman, Hamdi Yassidi, who was accused of embarrassing the state governor, Ahmad Aliu, on social media. Sidi was said to have condemned insecurity in the state and demanded action against bandits and incessant killings in a video posted on social media. She also highlighted the takeover of villages and houses being burned to the ground. CD was reported to have been secretly arraigned without access to a lawyer or family members last week, and is being persecuted for inciting unrest in the state. Bimbae. This is so heartbreaking because Sokoto State should be using these resources to counter the insurgency that has emerged in their state. Now, I was reading a, a report that was released by Vanguard, and Vanguard says that this uh, Lukarawa terrorist group is not new. They say that the Sokoto State DSS has been aware of them since 2018. What was done with that information? Only God knows. But now you see people who are coming out to social media to try and create some sort of awareness, awareness, and then this is how you treat them. But I want to dial back very quickly. I know Dr. Abati made a very valid point about the fact that the president is our chief uh, foreign policy officer. Now, it's concerning to see that at the moment our for foreign policy seems to be, you know, is, is addressing uh, the Middle East crisis. However, when you look at groups like Lukarawa specifically, and the Absolutely. fact that they're coming from Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, these are countries that are former ECOWAS members that Nigeria has had a spat with. So it's concerning because it feels like we should be addressing regional issues. Our foreign policy right now should be prioritizing our relationships with our neighbors, where these groups are now infiltrating from and emerging. Now, the next big concern with regards to this terrorist group and this insecurity currently in Sokoto State is that when you read about this group, Oji, they're focusing more on indoctrinating young people. Yeah than actually creating violence. So besides the cash reward that you mentioned, or rather the cash incentive that you mentioned, what they're doing is they're focusing on trying to brainwash young people. They're saying that you should not, uh, you're not allowed to carry a beard. They're saying that you're not allowed to listen to music. And if you're caught doing those things, then you are punished severely in those various local government areas. Uh, so this goes back, you know, everything is connected. It still goes back to the issue we discussed last week. Young people who are arranged for, for uh, protesting, I'd sent back to their villages, to their local government areas with 100,000 naira and smartphones. Well, now the terrorists are coming and saying, oh, okay, 100,000, we can do better. Give them one million. 
we haven't solved any problems. Yeah. We haven't solved any problems. So in all of this, I know Saudi Arabia has launched a fund that uh, of they've pledged that they'll invest 40 billion US dollars uh, to sub-Saharan Africa in the next uh, few years. So I understand the importance of Nigeria traveling abroad to engage with various people to try and attract much needed foreign investment. However, right now, our foreign policy direction looks like it needs to focus on our immediate neighbors Absolutely. to quell some of this. Absolutely. Well two, said. Two quick ones. Well said. Very briefly. Yeah. Now, even that foreign policy process is to be reviewed. That's what the experts are saying. The Afrocentric approach, the Father Christmas approach of our foreign policy. That's the big, uh, you know, academic point there. Now, the, the two things that I would just like to put on the table. When Commodore AB2 Ikiwe left the Babangida administration, he didn't resign. He was removed. So that should be underscored. But the point is that he opposed Nigeria That's the main joining point. The, major point, the organization yes, of uh, Islamic cooperation. That's the major Number point. two, another point of history. There was a Yom Kippur War in 1967. There was also the uh, Yom Kippur War again in 1973. Now, Nigeria severed relationship with Israel okay. in 1973. Now, what happened? When Nigeria under Babangida now joined OIC, Christians, so there was a lot of religious sentiment. Now, how will you turn against Israel where we go for Christian privilege and you go and join uh, OIC? So there was that religious sentiment at that time. And Nigeria did not restore relations with Israel until September 1992. All so right. these are historical facts right. that may guide those who are saying this is about Islam. All right, All right. well, this new terrorist group La Kurewa. I mean, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's an emerging story. And for them to compare it, like the people from Boko Haram is just really, really scary. Where we, we've been talking about the fact that Boko Haram is almost decimated. And now we are seeing a new group forming now. Welcome back, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. If you have watched this video to this very moment, it simply means you've heard everything in details and you now understood everything. Now, you need to start asking questions. For these people to come and be offering one million naira to each person that agrees to embrace Sharia, it simply means these people are being funded, just as you heard uh, Oseni Rofai. And these people that are funding them are the major people the government are supposed to look for to stampede those people funding them. But the question is, how would they stop these people when it is even them that is funding them? You see where the problem lies? So there is a very big problem in this country. All these things they are doing is a scripted drama. You understand? They are all scripted in the way they just want to use it to Islamize the country. And uh, you see in this country, Nigeria, there is no any part that is safe apart from the Southeast. Because the Southeast people have seen this long, even before it begins to happen. So for that reason, they have long prepared waiting for a moment like this. And in a moment like this, like I told you initially, when these people will start going to houses to knock at your door, when you open the door thinking it is a random visitor, behold, you will see heavily armed men. And they will ask you questions, just to question, Muslim or not Muslim? Islam or not Islam? Your answer will determine your fate. Either you remain alive or you become a dead man or woman. But because the Southeastern people, they have prepared long ago, as they already know the plan of Nigeria to Islamize the country, they will be exempted from this kind of dehumanization that is about to befall Nigeria. You see, this is why I have come, me and my life have made, put it upon ourselves to come and enlighten you Nigerians that are doubting Thomas. You like to doubt. You like to say these people, they are creating content. They are looking for money. They are doing this. Let me tell you, either you like it or you don't like it. Nigeria already is being Islamized. That is just the simple truth. Even though you feel it has not been made officially, they don't need to make it official before you know the country is being Islamized. If people that matters, people like uh, uh, T.Y. Danjuma who come and tell you that the country is being Islamized, and person like Kule or Lawumi can come and tell you that the country uh, is being Islamized, they want to Islamize this country. These are people who have hold vital paramount places of power in this country. 
They know Nigeria in and out. And they are telling you that the country has been Islamized. Nnam Dekano has been saying this for decades and people thought he was ranting. Today, everything he has said, all of them are coming to reality, one after the other. You feel it? So earlier, Nigerians wake up, the better for them. That is it. You know why? Because I am Onyechuku Meze. Who God has made king, he has made him king. Surugada is the dance of the spirit. A child that wants to know the cause of his parents' death must be ready to dance to the tune of Surugada, which is Egundemo in my dialect. My brothers and sisters, which you don't know, you don't know. Because it's senior you as now your grandmama, now your grandpapa. That's all the matter be. Don't forget, I love you.